Hello my bucko's. Today was gonna be a fun little meander to a costume uh, that I really wanted to see and I needed to see for some research purposes. So join me on an adventure. Hello and welcome to Book Courting by Bianca. I'm Bianca. It's spoopy season but also that means time to reinvigorate some spoopy sewing and that means doing my rejected her universe designs for Dracula 1992. I don't anticipate I'm going to get any or all of them done before Halloween because of finals, but I do want to work on a couple of things that are Dracula inspired along the way. So even if you don't see the video, I have been making stuff and that's on me. That's the thing I want to do. It doesn't have to always be filmed. My husband and I happen to have the same off day on a weekday, which is my favorite time to actually go on field trips. I don't like doing things on the weekend. It's always busy where we are and chaotic and no one wears masks and I want to wear a mask and also not be near crowds. That's where I am. So we don't do things weekends where it's crowded. But having a weekday off, it was the prime time to go to one of my favorite little gyms in North Bay in Northern California, which is Coppola Vineyard. What does this have to do with the costumes from Dracula 1982? Let's find out. If you follow the 101 North, you get off at, I guess, Independence Drive if you're going this way, but a different one probably if you're going another way. Um, you can check out this vineyard. It's right down here. Um, you'll take a left after you get off the freeway and it'll be right in front of you. Okay, we made it. It was an hour. It wasn't a bad hour of driving. And now we are at the vineyard. Okay, Frank says I didn't do enough. Well, I feel like I name dropped this was Coppola Vineyard in my previous video, but here we are. Okay, so Frank's point was that I wasn't saying that this is the Francis Ford Coppola Winery. So it's gonna have movie memorabilia from the Coppolas. If you're in Northern California, this is a great stop because right in the hallways is going to be amazing memorabilia and costume props. Aiko Ishioka is the person who designed the amazing costumes from Dracula 1992 and you can see some of them on display at the vineyard right in front of the restaurant there and you can just see these are stunning costumes. The lighting is not amazing but you can get up close and you can see these um, in a way that I feel like you can't really always see classic movie costumes like this. You can see the detail work and of course in person it's much more vibrant um, and doesn't have the glare. You can see the neon signs of the restaurant in your photos and stuff. But 
it's great to see the embroidery that's made to mimic lace. It's great to see all of the behind the scenes photos there. And um, you can see that we have the classic armor on display. And then we have Mina's wedding gown, which is only in the movie for just a split second. And then Lucy's own wedding gown that becomes her funeral shroud. Um, Frank noticed that the armor is not assembled correctly on this. And that was our kind of car ride home pet peeve talk. Um, so maybe my goal will be to slowly become um, a museum assistant or a conservation uh, assistant so that I can help uh, reinstall this uh, costume exhibit so it's uh, properly done. But it's stunning in person. It's really detailed and it's just a really cool stop. So I took a ton of photos and videos and then we checked out the rest of the vineyard and you can see there's just like a bunch of places to buy stuff. There's stuff for the Godfather, for Tucker, um, tons of wine, of course, um, wine themed for movies, director's cut themed stuff. And there's a little Sofia Coppola area too. So if you are a fan of Sofia Coppola, um, check out the Sofia, which is named for her. And then they had this book that was, of course, featuring Marie Antoinette, uh, which I think a lot of historical costume folks probably very familiar with um and you can go up to the bar upstairs and they actually have um these ships that were used uh during the filming of Marie Antoinette you can see there a little clip of it and Frank was over there enjoying getting some inside peeks at it After we checked out the bar and a couple other little places, we then went outside and got some delicious food at their little outdoor cafe, which doesn't have as much as a restaurant, but it's still a pretty fun stop by the pool. Pretty cool, pretty nice, lots of outdoor seating. And then we proceeded toward further adventures. But as you can see, it's quite a lovely trip and a nice little like day jaunt from where we are. As you can see, it was a really fun trip. We really enjoyed the outdoor seating area, which was not crowded at all on a Friday. And it was great. There weren't a ton of people. It was nice weather. It wasn't super hot as it can get in the valleys here. Um, and it was just like pleasant. It was still kind of warm, but like pleasant. And they had Impossible Burger now. And we shared Impossible Burger with such good fries. Oh my God. And then we bought some gifts for the family and I bought myself some wine and then we went to a really cool two-story game shop in Santa Rosa which was great. So yeah it was a super fun trip and on the way there on the way back we inhaled um, the audiobook for Legends and Lattes which is a book about kind of like a D&D-ish fantasy world where an orc decides to stop going on their like adventures involving like, you know, being paid to deal with people and villains and bad things. I guess being a hired mercenary? And the orc decides to stop all that and open a coffee shop in this little town that doesn't have a coffee shop because like coffee's apparently like a gnomish thing and it's not really done outside the region. So this orc like starts a coffee shop and it's adorable and there's like a little like ratkin that like makes adorable yummy things and the food descriptions are so good that like Frank literally ordered us coffee and cinnamon rolls for when we got home because I was just like craving them so badly based on the descriptions in the book. There's also like a succubus uh, barista that's a friend um, in it. Anyway, it's really good. It's really cute. And I hope you all check that out as well. Anyway, the next time you're in North Bay and in the area, go check out Coppola Vineyard if you're a new movie nerd because like that's a really great stop for just getting photos and like checking out all the cool movie memorabilia and also just, you know, chilling outside by the pool with a nice drink, but also don't drink and drive. Here's two more fun spoopy Dracula things ahead and thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to make it so.